The U.S. government spent more than $3 billion over five years to fight drug traffickers in Latin America, only to see drug smuggling actually increase, along with the power of the cartels. Billions more were spent on the border fence. We took a tour of that fence, which some say has done little to secure the southwest border. Every day is different. You just don't know what you're going to come across. There is no typical day for Border Patrol agents on the Rio Grande. So that's why you have to be alert all the time, be uh, extra vigilant. Daniel Milian knows quiet. Got three rafts coming your way. Can quickly become chaos. There's two units on the south side, rafts in the water, rafts in the water. More of an urgency, if anything, from the bad guys. That urgency means an increase in assaults on law enforcement. Three Border Patrol agents getting killed, one of them repeatedly being run over. One of them repeatedly shot. See, Hifredo Gonzalez Jr. is the sheriff of Zapata County, Texas, a place he calls the front line. America does not really know what's happening on the border. Look for guns, Rudy. Smugglers are desperate to protect their cargo at any cost. There's the weed. There's the weed. Drug seizures are unprecedented. Yeah, we have three bundles. On this 200-mile stretch of the border, a record one million pounds of pot this year. Marijuana, uh, cocaine, crystal meth, uh, is flowing through uh, that very lucrative Mexican supply chain and ending up in the streets of Denver. Fred Burton is a former State Department special agent. He now works in Austin, Texas for Stratfor, a private think tank that monitors global threats. It's much closer to your home than you realize. Burton says the cultivation of medical marijuana in Colorado has done little to hurt the illegal pot trade. But as you look at this from the uh, medical marijuana perspective, uh, it's really a drop in the bucket. The drug business is worth an estimated 25 to $30 billion a year. Most of that cash goes south, along with many of the weapons cartels are using to equip their private armies. The bulk of the stolen firearms here in the United States are bound uh, for Mexico. Burton says terrorist organizations may also be on the border. And that's the kind of emerging threat that uh, is of great concern. The FBI and DEA say they recently broke up a terror plot devised in Mexico and backed by Iran. We have pushed the terrorist groups back to predominantly the southern border. Homeland Security documents show an Iranian American wanted to hire the Zeta drug cartel to carry out bomb attacks in Washington. And of course the main threat is we're trying to prevent terrorists, terrorism. Last year, Border Patrol agents caught illegal immigrants from 73 countries. You know, like Iraq, Afghanistan. All of it after the U.S. government spent billions on this wall designed to make the southern border more secure. You can see the border wall would be pretty difficult to climb over. There's concrete on the bottom, steel on top, and it's about 18 feet tall. The border wall spans about 700 miles, leaving the other 1,300 miles of border with no wall at all. The important thing to remember about the wall, it's not a, a continuous barrier. It's just placed in strategic locations. Milian explains the gaps of the wall are supposed to channel smugglers into areas where they're easier to catch. You know, it'll slow them down. He calls the wall a valuable tool. It's making an impact. In a time of turmoil on the border. Basically what we're trying to do is, you know, just protect the American public and the people. And coming up later this hour, a border security debate. You'll hear why noted immigration critic and former Colorado Congressman Tom Tancredo believes just 33 miles of the border fence is actually an effective barrier. And after the break, an illegal immigrant who says even deportation won't stop him from coming back to the U.S. You know, we're seeing a drop in the number of illegal immigrants here in Colorado. Border Patrol apprehensions nationwide are down from a peak of nearly 1.7 million in 2000 to less than half a million last year. There are still an estimated 11 million illegal immigrants living in the United States, 180,000 of them right here in Colorado. During our trip to the border, photojournalist Corky Scholl and I traveled with a group as they were sent back to Mexico. One man told us he will cross illegally again. Across the river, illegal. This is where his journey began. He turned all red. Huh? He turned all red. Yeah. This is where it ends. Well, I feel nervous. After 14 years, half his life in the U.S., Noy Mendoza is being processed for deportation. My family is real sorry, anyways. See, my wife, my mama. 
He has 17 brothers in Colorado, Texas, and other states. How did your brothers come to Colorado? Uh, same thing, everybody cross the river. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, is focused on deporting violent criminals and drug offenders. Our goal is to, to remove the criminal element. But many here, including Mendoza, are only guilty of breaking U.S. immigration law. Whatever the law says to do, that's what we do. Randall Henderson oversees the South Texas detention complex. We have people here from approximately 72 different countries. So far this fiscal year, ICE has sent back to Mexico 15,000 illegal immigrants from this facility alone. The average stay here is 31 days. This removal bus goes every day, every evening. Tonight, 22 people will make the two-hour trip to the border. I don't have life over there, Max. Nobody can have a life over there. Mendoza says most men his age are forced to work for the drug cartels. I'm scared. Yeah, pretty scared. A feeling that only gets worse as the bus pulls up to the border. At the International Bridge in Laredo, Texas, detainees are given their belongings. We treat them humanely. ICE Deputy Field Office Director Jace Calderas is used to seeing familiar faces, people who have been deported more than once. If they uh, come back, the penalties more severe. Martina Rodriguez, Mendoza Martinez, Pisazo Venez. Repeat immigration offenders are being prosecuted and can even get prison time. We make our streets safer. Mendoza says he's willing to risk prosecution to be with his family again. It's pretty soon. I don't know what it is say, so I'll come back real soon. He plans to cross the Rio Grande just like he did 14 years ago. I feel real good. Now we come on free. Beginning the journey again. My life is over here. I don't know how to life in Mexico. So I'll come back. Less than three weeks after that interview, Noy Mendoza called me and he said he is now back here in the United States. He is working on a farm in Texas. A year later, we still feel like it's a nightmare. When we come back, piecing together the clues of a Colorado man's murder on this border lake. Now to the latest on a Colorado man's death at the hands of a Mexican drug cartel. A South Texas sheriff tells Nine Wants to Know he believes David Hartley's body will never be found. It's been more than a year since Hartley was shot and killed on Falcon Lake, a 60-mile reservoir that straddles the border. David and his wife Tiffany got on their jet skis for a sightseeing trip to the Mexican side of the lake. Suspected cartel members opened fire, shooting David in the head. Zapata County Sheriff Cifredo Gonzalez Jr. says there are new clues in the case. This photo, taken from an aircraft minutes after the shooting, shows several men matching Hartley's description of the attackers. Gonzalez believes they're members of the Zetas, a violent drug trafficking organization that controls Falcon Lake. He says they may have mistaken the Hartleys for rival cartel members and destroyed all the evidence when they realized their mistake. It's my belief that David's body will never be found. Why is that? The body does not exist. What do you think, what do we think happened to it? Uh, as far as I know, uh, the body was uh, disappeared. There's no body. One year later, we saw warning signs on the lakeshore, but not much else has changed. Tiffany Hartley now lives in LaSalle, and we went with her as she made the emotional trip with David's mother back to the place where he died. Let me sit here. The silence. It's so quiet today makes the pain impossible to ignore. It's hard to believe it's been a year. Memories of David Hartley are everywhere. My son. Pam Hartley remembers the excitement in her son's voice. I can see why he'd like this lake. David and his wife Tiffany had one more day to play on their jet skis. I can see him out here having a ball. That big old grin of his. The Hartleys were about to move home to Colorado after two years on the Texas-Mexico border. It's such a beautiful lake, and it reminds me of the worst day in my entire life. They decided to go to the Mexican side of Falcon Lake to check out an old church. And I have replayed that day, you know, in my mind. 
David never made it back. The moment I saw him being thrown off the jet ski, right then and there, I knew he was gone. Suspected drug cartel members spotted the Hartleys and opened fire, hitting David in the head. That image will always be there. I think it will always be there forever. His body was too heavy for Tiffany to lift out of the water. I didn't know what to do. The men began chasing her. She had no choice but to leave David behind. The whole world turned upside down then. Pam lost her only son. Just miss him so very much. Tiffany never takes off David's wedding ring. <laughs> and on this day, the two women who love David the most There's roses for each of them. came to say I love you one more time. For all our family and friends that wanted to be here but can't. Each rose has a special meaning. For me, I hate it without you. Honey, I miss you so much. And then... This one's to you, David. The most special of all. <laughs> this is the closest she's been to David since the day he lost his life on this lake. For David's widow and mother, it's almost worse the second time around. You're everything to us. And you'll always carry a place in our heart forever. <laughs> Tiffany Hartley says she's been stonewalled by the federal government. She wants information about her husband's death and is now suing the State Department, Justice Department, and the FBI. We're not going anywhere. We're going to stay here and fight this thing or die doing it. Up next, the rancher who says drugs and bodies are piling up on his land. It's quite a tragedy. And we take you to a place where the American dream dies.